He gave me more of like a. Like, gave me more of like okay so you know how we say we love Jesus but it's more of like obviously the word says um, if you love me you will keep my commandments so like love equals obedience and that's kind of like what he gave me like you say you love me but then if you don't obey it's just like saying you say you love me but your heart is far from me <laughs> So hello guys, welcome to um, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know that. Periscope today. Uh, yes, I know I do look nice. So before you guys even kind, cause you guys try to say that and distract. They say it. They do. And they try to distract me. So before you say it, thank you in advance. I'm just gonna have to. Made the though. image of Jesus. Thank you already, but you know. Yeah, Shaba. Anyways. Perfectly um, and wonderfully made. Yes, Lord. He didn't make no mistakes, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to today where the topic is the love of Jesus, so we are excited, see, I'm trying to figure out how can we, like, make our voices louder in this area, cause, like, just like I, I physically is? try to, but, like, it's like my voice box is just like, nope, not today, or well, anything, do it today, just I'm gonna be loud today, it's not about that. So, I don't hear me, that's it. So, two people now. Friends, go. I look ghostly. Do you have ghosts in my way? No. I just hold on. Okay. I'm ghosting. You see, they just asked me for lotion. Hello, when mm -hmm. she have lotion herself. You know what? Sometimes she's sucking it. Asking me to go. Not if they don't have it, she'll see. Take it. If you're receiving it. You see, I told you they already started. See, I'm telling you. Oh, Lord. Thank you. You weren't here when I already said what I said. Um, yeah, I don't think the music is going to help. Just listen, listen, listen. You don't got to okay. reply. Thank you. You don't got to reply. Yeah. Hello. She's just getting her stuff ready. <laughs> you're, you're not. I just. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just. I understand. Alright, so no. basically, the most obvious scripture that we're going to. Thank you. The most obvious scripture that we're going to use today is. Um, John 3.16. Yeah, I'm probably just going to have to hold this because John 3.16. I mean, I, where it reads... No, because I have to... Yeah. So, John 3.16. Project, which reads... Project, project early. You project your faith. Alright. Alright. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. right. Hmm? We're fine. I mean, I know it. I do know it. Don't get me wrong here. But I just want to look it. Yeah, look it up. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, which is the fourth book of the gospel. Uh, 316. John 316. Where it reads, um, thank you, Trina. John. Yes, that's a, it's a great verse. Um, John 316. Which reads, I'll actually show you it. Because faith without sin is something. I mean, I know it. I'm just. There was. <laughs> I don't think I was thinking that one. But, um, anyways. So, John 3 16 reads. In the King James Version. Could you get it in the um, Amplified Version? Yeah, yes. John 3 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his. Oh, 
He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, which is it's eternal life. So, what it's saying is that God loved the world so much. It's saying God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Okay. Yeah, he gave his one and only son. And, you know, to die for us, for our sins, for the past sins, for the, the present sins, and for the future sins. This was over 2,000 years ago. And so, we're talking about the love of Jesus because, you know, he was the one that died. He understands our, um, you know, our issues because he lived on this earth in the flesh. He understands our pain. He understands the persecution. You know? So... Love. It, you couldn't not love somebody and, you know, do these things. It's just like, you couldn't. So, yeah. Hey, you guys. Um, what did I say? So, please just read to you guys the King James Version. And um, I'm going to be reading to this. By the way, my name's Christian. Um, I'm going to be reading to you guys um, the Amplified Version of John 3 16. So, from my phone. The Bible app. She yeah. just wants you to see okay. her yeah. iPhone 6. Yeah. Hush, it's, it's the Bible app. Knows. But, it says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, or relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, or be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Um, so what do you get from it? I'm going to actually go beyond and okay. go into 17 and maybe 18 and then end there. But after that it says, For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge or to reject, to condemn, or to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. He who believes in him, who clings to, trusts in, and relies on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation, no incurs, no, dim no damnation. But he who does not believe, cleave to, rely on, trust in him, is judged already. He has already been convicted and has already received his sentence. Because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God, he is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. So that basically tells me, it's, it's a lot, but um, that basically tells me that if you're one, okay. So what did you go up to? Okay. So here's how this goes. No, what did you go up to? 18. Um, I read John 3, 16 to 18 um, in the Amplified Version, which I love the way they put that. Um, I'm a King James junkie. I love King James Version, but Amplified just put that really nicely. So um, basically, it says that... God, like he said, he gave his only begotten son for us to die. He died for our sins because he loved us that much. And human, I would, <clears throat> and spiritually, I believe that having someone die for you because they loved you that much, the only thing you could do is reciprocate that love. And the in best this way form, you know how. Hmm? The best way that you know how. The best way that you know how. And the way that we <clears throat> that we can reciprocate that love is to allow Christ into our hearts, to trust in Him, and to fully rely on everything that He can do for us, and to believe that He is our Lord. And that is how we reciprocate that love that He had given to us by dying for us on the cross. Now, the Bible does say, I just read it, that if you do not trust in Him, do not fully rely on Him, you're convicted already, you're sent, you're already judged. Because God did not send Christ into the world to judge us. Let me read that again. Um, while she gets that, I just wanted to say that's why um, God was talking. I think it was last night. I just wanted. He was saying that um, you know people who are condemned. Because Christians are, you know, convicted by the Holy Spirit. And people who are condemned, it's... Because there are some Christians who feel like they are condemned. And so, I, if someone would say that to me, come to me and say that, I would say, you know, you need to make sure that you are in the right place that you need to be with God. Because, not saying, you know, that they're not a Christian. Because, like you said, Christians are convicted. But you need to make sure 
that you know you know your place in God and you need to make sure that you that yeah that you know your place in God because the devil can easily come in and just be like you know oh you know this sin this sin that sin that sin it's like if you don't know the power that you have the devil knows what power you have so he can easily use you know what you're doing now because we all, all we see right now is the present and the past we don't see the future we don't see where we're going we don't see the things that we are doing that's going to you know affect later on so right now he's just saying oh you know you did that and you're a horrible person and so if you aren't anchored in jesus as you should be as a christian if you aren't you know communing with god the way that you should be that's like it's a serious thing and basically sorry to cut you off but basically um what we learned in bible study wednesday was that the three things that stay in god's peace and present you know we receive the peace and the presence but the three ways of saying it is by praying you know having and praying isn't just our father who art in heaven it's like you know having a true conversation with him like having like talking me and her talking me and you talking right now it's like conversation and you really have to like you can hear from god in any in any way i was saying yesterday you know he could to speak to you through a verse, through a song, through a TV show, through a sign on the door, through overhearing people's conversation. You can, anywhere, he can, because, you know, he, that's who he is. He can strategically place anybody anywhere, you know, to tell us about these things that he wants us to tell us. So, you know, you just got to make sure that your eyes are open and your ears are open spiritually so that you are in the right place to receive what he has for you um with that being said you know we need to make sure that we know the power that we hold because if we can easily easily get distracted by the enemy and he can easily tell us you know anything and be like you know you don't deserve these things like you no you're not no you're doing wrong you, you know like no if God says that, you know, he's going to get me through, then he's going to get me through. I can't look at where I'm at right now. I need to look at, you know, my future. But because he knows our future, he tries to discourage us before we get there. Yeah. So, um, I think that was all I have. Yeah, but, so, I just, um, so, I was just going to, like, Kind of piggyback off of what she was saying that um as i was telling you before the bible says in john 3 17 it says for god did not send the son into the world in order to judge or condemn the world um like she was saying that a lot of christians sometimes feel like they're condemned i think um you can kind of answer this too i, mean, I think like a lot of if you have a different idea about it but i think a lot of christians confuse condemnation and conviction because conviction is supposed to make you it's a, it's a spirit thing it's, a, it's like a <laughs> nudge in your stomach and like you feel like okay that was wrong and it's to me personally I feel like conviction is kind of like you feel the brunt of your sin the way that God built it that's conviction condemnation isn't of I God agree. obviously um, for the Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. God, condemnation is not of God. Condemnation is of Satan. Condemnation is something, it's, it makes you feel guilty about what you've done. If you're, not, uh, if you're not in Christ. If you're not in Christ. But if you are in Christ, then it's not a thing. Yes. Exactly. That, because it yeah. says right there. There is no say, condemnation. It says that you already are We're condemned. It says 19. It says... Yeah. Yeah, 18, uh, John 3 and 18 says, He that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that has, but he that believeth not is condemned. So, basically saying, you know, you can believe or you won't believe. If you believe, you aren't condemned. If you don't believe, then you are condemned. And it's just saying, and that's why a lot of people, you know, say, like, a lot of people try so hard to find, you know, 
that thing. They try to like live a perfect life, but it's like, no, with Christ, you don't have to. You don't have to try, try that hard. I mean, you have to try, but you don't have to try that hard because if you believe, and that's why I'm saying believe. You don't have to know for a fact. You just have to have it said, Matthew. I saw it the other day. It was in a bunch of things. But basically, what I'm saying is, you know, it says just have the, you know, faith as small as the mustard seed, and you know, you just have to have that small faith that, you know, a little inkling. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna believe. So it's like whoever believes, it's like you're saying, okay, God, I'm giving my burdens to you. I'm giving, you know, all these things to you. But if you don't, then it's like you have that on your back. You know, you have the burden. And you're carrying the pain on you, and it's, that's not cool. Um, I just want to read a little something um, to you that basically, it basically, let me get to it. I don't know where I have it on my phone, but I like reading it from the actual Bible. Um, I don't know why I got this title, but um, one was eight and one. Um, basically, this is the exact same thing Kali was telling you guys, but it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk, that which, okay, sorry. <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, um, okay, 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 I'm going to keep going. Um, for they that are after the flesh do, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, which means the enemy is against God, um, against or it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed it can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if so be that, in the spirit of God dwell in me. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Um, and that right there, my friend, is scary. Because, okay, so obviously, like we were saying, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Here's how that gets type scary for a lot of us, because there are many Christians walking around without the Holy Spirit. And in verse 9 here, 8 and 9, Romans 8 and 9, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Means that, it means that they are Christians. Like that's plain and simple. Like uh, that, black and white. No, no. Oh. Yeah. It's right there. It's highlighted. So. It's, it's as if, um, it's as if you're walking around with literal blinders on. Um, it was crazy, we were just talking about that in my psychology class. It's as if you're walking around with blinders. It's like you're walking that. around blind and deaf. And you have like some type of, but it's like you're walking around in a bubble because you're, you know, you're keeping, like, you know, when they're, you're sick, like they have those shows that people walk around in the bubble so that, you know, they don't contaminate everybody and stuff but it's like it's like you're walking around in a bubble because you can't feel if you don't have the spirit then you don't sense you know the things or at least maybe they have the spirit but they you know don't tune into the spirit because he has given us it but we have to i, I don't know like it's i'm pretty sure it's in us because he that's what like the you know when he breathed into Adam, he gave us a spirit. So that was a soul. So we have a soul, spirit, and a body. And us. <sighs> but yeah, this is talking, it's titled, chapter, Romans chapter 8 is titled, uh, The Spirit of Life. So, you know, it's talking about life.
This is funny. In my Bible, it's titled, um, <clears throat> The Spirit Delivers from the Power of the Flesh. Um, and that's basically exactly what it does. Your flesh and your spirit do this that's every single Amen. day. They pop, pop, pop. And it, it says, right, they're fighting against it, says it, is not, it is not subject to the law of God. What is the law of God? You know, the Bible, the Torah, whatever you want to call it. The word of God is the law of God. And, um... And it's saying that it's not subject to it. So when it says it's not subject to it, that means that, you know, submission is like being under the mission of something. It's saying that it doesn't follow its orders. So how are you going to be a Christian, but your flesh is always not following the orders of God? Like what a Christian is, is, you know, a Christ-like person. If you're not being like Christ, if you're not going under his orders, then, you know, you you can't be a Christian because it's just, it's not. Um, I was going to say that, like, I guess a lot of people, um, we know the Christianese, Christianity, we know the church, we know the verses that you're supposed to know, but you don't know no, nobody, none of the verses, you know the good verses that everybody, you don't know verse, John 3, 16, Romans 8 and 1, Philippians um, 4 and 13, Genesis 1 and 1, uh, like, 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 those regular verses that like, you know what I mean, but you never crack this baby open and read anything else because you think you're fine. Mm-hmm. Because you know, because they tell the you that you're fine, and you wonder why when you're getting calamity and trials. Where's God? You, there's, there's, he, you're, you're like, where's God? He's there. You're just not there. You're just not. In, you're not in tune. You're not in position with him. He's there. You're not in and you're over here. He's over here. And he wants to be near you, but he says, draw nigh unto him. Yeah. But if you got the blocker, if you're in your bubble. There, you ain't gonna get to them. You gotta let the bubble pop. It's just, it's just like when you're in a romantic relationship, quote unquote. Well, I don't want to say quote unquote. When you're in a relationship and you're, you're not letting go one in, you're not breaking down any of your barriers. You're just walled up, right? So like, it's just, it's just the way. It's the same way with God. Um, I read something the other day, and it was talking about. How with God, if your God doesn't feel, if your relationship with God doesn't feel like a loving marriage. Is there something wrong with it? Because it's supposed to, you're, it's suppo- you're supposed to feel like you're married, you're married to Christ. To Christ. You're, you are married to Christ. You are his bride. And He's the bride. Just queen. imagine a husband and wife just got married, just came back from the honeymoon. And they ain't don't talk to nobody. They don't talk to each other. Yeah. They sleep in different rooms. They... You see them once a week they don't for an hour. You see them an hour, an hour once a week. Plus, what he going to give you an hour? Here's my thing. That's a living with that. Some churches. Church for an hour. You don't, you don't even get... And then you have such a stringent, strict... And you don't even... you. It's it's like, hi. You get some money. It's not like you don't... You don't commune with him. You don't... You know, you don't talk. You guys don't communicate. You just... Clap your hands, stand up, sing songs. And you know, it's, it's to a team. You don't like you get it to the Yeah, to it's point. routine. And, and you do it after, out of habit, not out of yes. love. You know, after, in a while, and after a while, after you start doing things out of habit, out of routine, they become monotonous. You get tired. And you just say, well, why do I want to do this? And then people stop going to church because so they say routine. it's the same old thing. It's the same old, same old. My That's thing. because you've never really had a true encounter with Jesus Christ. And the goal is to have an encounter every yes. day. Yes. A new encounter yes. every day. He says his mercy are new every morning. Um, and it's, it seems as though we, I'm saying we, because we, it seems as though we as a church have gotten so used to monotonous Christianity that things are just going about the way they want to go. And they this have is a why schedule, set schedule for everything to go on. And, and it has to go the way the schedule is going to go or... They're going to cut listen, someone off. If, listen, if your church doesn't allow the Holy Spirit to move when he wants to move, how he wants to move, and it's changes, it holds in the Spirit, get out now. Because, I, personally, because 
I couldn't, personally me, I could not be in a church where the Holy Spirit wasn't allowed to move freely and willingly. I just couldn't do that because it's his. It's his church. The church is not the pastor's church. The building church. It's is, the building. You know, the building is like paid for by the, you know, the it's church. It's his church. But it's his church. He can do whatever he want to do in his church because it's his church. You know what I'm saying? So, um, what was I speaking about? It just seems as though we've gotten so used to just the common Christianity. And this is why you see a lot, especially a lot of youth and love. I think youth, the youth, this generation, obviously, this is the generation of them that seeks the face of God. This is this is this generation. We are literally the Joshua generation. We are the Joel, Joel. generation. We are the um, the Acts two seventeen. <laughs> That's my scripture, y'all. That generation, right? Um, and it says Acts two seventeen. In the last day, said God, I will pour my spirit among all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And it's as if we are hunger. We're literally in hunger after Christ. It's, it's an appetite. We need to get fulfilled with something. And this is why you see things such as revivals and Azusa Now and Together 2016 because we want a new, um, a new refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And because we 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 see it, um, we see how things have just gotten so obvious. When church becomes obvious, there's an issue. When <laughs> when you know something's gonna something's coming up because that's how it goes every Sunday. We want a new thing to happen, honestly, and it's gonna happen, and um, I'm excited about it. But I feel like we, as a church, not just as young people, but as a church in general, have to get on board and get in line with the Holy Spirit and what he's about to do in this country and what he's about to do in this generation. Um, and it's going to be something that we've never seen before. Um, he's going to literally flip to make sure that we're down. ready. Yes. You have to be spiritually ready for this because if you're not, because it's a battle. We're in spiritual warfare. For <laughs> the weapons that are warfare are not carnal, but spiritual. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we, we're, we don't, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, but the wars of darkness of this world. See, it's the despots that get you because they rule, like, you can't see, like, have you ever imagined a battle? <laughs> You're fighting. You can't even see your opponent. Like, what? You're, like, sh you're literally shadow boxing. This is just, yeah, I don't know what that you, is. Okay, so shallow boxing is basically you're fighting with the air. So it's like, you know, so ooh, my ooh. So literally, you're shallow boxing. So it's like you're fighting what you cannot see. Um, but yeah. see, this is how good God is. This is how great. It is to be a Christian that we're fighting something we cannot see, but God has given us the weapons. Weapons already. Um, the word. The word is a sword. The belt of righteousness. What? What scripture is that? I know it, but it's not coming to me right now. Ten. Ephesians six. Ephesians six. Okay, so I'm gonna read it. All to you, okay? Because this is, this is serious. Um, like I was saying, I joke around a lot, but this is serious. Um, this is not just something that, okay, we're Christians, we don't, you know, it's just, this is an actual fight. Every day, it's a daily fight. Um, this is why the Bible says, this is why you hear a lot of Christians say, die daily. You gotta die daily. It's a Your daily flesh. death. Um, to refresh your, your flesh, the flesh that we're talking about that doesn't want to be subject to God, yeah, that's what has to die daily. Because you can't have two, it's like having two different, 
Sorry guys, we're gonna have to turn the chat off cause apparently numbers do not matter. It could be zero and we still administer the word. Okay. Competition is only for people who are against you. So it's the end. So there are two people watching. So, like I was saying, we have to die daily. And she was saying we have to die daily. I was saying that the flesh has to die daily because there can't be two people living in one body because they're, you know, it's like those, uh, what are those twins called? That the Siamese twins with the things attached to each other. Oh, um, Siamese, right? What? Yeah, Siamese. Conjoined. Conjoined. Conjoined twins. It's like you know, they may have one body. Like it, you know, it varies. Like they could have one body and two heads, or they could have two bodies and one head. You know, it's. And it's not like making fun of anybody or anything, but it's like it can be very difficult, I'm sure, you know, trying to function that, you know, it's it's not an easy life, I'm almost sure. So we just need to, you know, we are one and what is that? Uh, Ephesians 3 and 4, where it says that we are... God says that we have this Is it three and five? Or is it four and five? No, Ephesians four and five. It says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So, oh. One God. Four and four, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So, as I was at Teen Night, as mo I don't know if any of you saw any of these people, seen, but I had on Periscope Monday. Teen Night, um, Teen Night was a little different. I kind of got a headache, so I listened to some music and was reading my word and so God sent me to scripture Ephesians 4 and 5 and it was just talking about you know one like that's what it said is one you know one Lord one faith one baptism because there are many people many Christians many people who say you know I belong to this you know baptism and I believe in this faith and Lord and all that stuff it's, you know he's saying we are one you know stop separating yourselves because mm. It's, you talk about Cornelius Lindsay? Yeah, the spirit of the vision. You know, it, it's a spirit. That's what it is. Whenever, you know, you have people going at the same goal and you're dividing yourself. Like, why, why are you dividing yourself? Why aren't you working together? If you literally have the same goal, why are you fighting? Like, do you understand that you are slowing down the process? Hold on. Okay, because God just gave me something, and it's crazy. So, well, it's not crazy, it was just like, I said, boop, drop. <laughs> well, he so, said boop, drop. He dropped, he said boop, drop. And you said and, caught. Yeah, I caught it. It was boop, drop. You said caught. caught. You drop, said caught. Okay, anyway. But, so, <laughs> so, um, in Genesis, God gives us the word, and he says, be fruitful and multiply. Um, he tells, um,
He says he tells them to be to be fruitful and multiply, and it's and also obviously he tells us to go therefore and preach the gospel and to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's our duty. That's our calling. That's what we've been commissioned to do. And he just dropped it in my spirit, which is kind of cool. Um, I like the way he said it. So I'm say how he said it because that's what he told me. Um, if we're continually dividing, how are we then to multiply? Just think of it in terms of math. If you're always dividing, how are you going to multiply? You can't. It's impossible. You're taking away things all the time. You're dividing, 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 dividing. You can't multiply that way. It's also the same way when you put a subtract and add. You're subtracting, subtracting, subtracting. How are you supposed to add on to the faith when you're continually breaking apart? Breaking apart. We are one church. We are one body. We're one body. And we have to make sure that we are that we are kept together. He is the glue. If we if we water down the glue, we can't water down the faith. We can't say you know, this is allowed and that is allowed because if you keep watering down Jesus, the power of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the glue is going to fall apart and, well, the glue is going to get watered down. It's going to not be sticking anymore and the body is going to fall apart. And that's just what Satan wants. He wants us to believe these things, you know, oh, it's okay to do this and oh, it's okay to do that. No, God has a standard. No matter what, you know, his love, you know, is sufficient enough for all. His love is, you know, he, it makes us, you know, want to do better. It gives us, you know, the strength and the courage to do better. But, you know, I'm going to say it. He's not, you know, he's not a fool. He's not going to say, you know, you can do whatever you want just because I love you. It's like, no, this is... This is hard work, you know. It says fight the good fight of faith. It says a good fight. It doesn't say a wimpy fight. It doesn't say water down fight. It says fight the good fight. Yes. If you ever watch those boxing matches, which I haven't, um, <laughs> it's a good fight. You see, you know, the raw blood and sweat and tears and all that stuff. So, you know, it's a good fight. So, you know, you can't expect to get rewarded greatly if you don't. You know, put in the you know work, and it's the same way as if we like. It's the same way as if we're like. I'm gonna be in the soon because I'm gonna try to catch the bus at twelve eighteen. But um, oh, but it's just the same as if. I sort of forgot what I was saying. Basically, what I was saying. You know. We gotta be one faith. We gotta stay connected. We can't water it down because if we water it down, then it's gonna fall apart and it's gonna be useless. And like I was saying, that's what the enemy wants is for it to be useless. But it can't be useless. Why? Because it says, you know, we have to. We have to be these things. Be and there are gonna be some that do fall apart from the faith because of the water that they, you know, have done. But yeah. I'm sorry. Hey guys. So I have a few things. So um, as she was saying, watered down. Some of us are being watered down with anything other than the living word, or the living water. God, we don't. We're not getting His word. So it's just as though we go to church and we shout, we roll on the ground, fall out, cry. I do none of these things. Just so you know. Not out of pride, just it just doesn't happen. It will. Um, <laughs> I mean, it but, may. Um, it may. But um, but um, it's like we. Okay, I'm gonna say it. So your tradition doesn't necessarily constitute whether God is pleased with you. I know a lot of churches have a lot of traditions they've done forever. Like, their traditions are like, just, this is the tradition, this is what we do. But it's like, 
God, I never do tell y'all to do that in the first place. God changes things up all the I mean, he doesn't change because he is the same forever. He's the same forever. But, you know, like I was listening to Daryl Walls yesterday. You know, he has to change in order to, you know, like, you know, if it's a new generation, the old generation has different, this is what Daryl Walls saying. I'm not taking any credit. But, you know, if the old generation has something that they like, there's a whole new whole new couple of generations that like something totally different mm -hmm. so you know he's not changing his purpose he's just changing you know the plan he's changing the plan so that he can get us to Amen. the purpose like and that was Miles Monroe like that, that wasn't me um in that that is so true um God never changes his word never changes this stays the same forever right and it's just like you're saying in the generations, the way in which this is told changes. It changes. Um, depending the translations on change. The, uh, depending a lot on of stuff is lost in meaning. Right? Um, a lot of stuff is lost. A lot of people <laughs> misinterpreted. <laughs> if you don't have the Holy Spirit, let me tell you this. Yep. If you don't have it, and it's a scripture somewhere, because I yes. saw it one day, but I haven't found it since. I'm going to look it up. Again, just for you guys. But it's a scripture where it says that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you can't understand the word. So, like she was saying, everyone doesn't have the Holy Spirit. So, you no. Know, then it's just like you're reading a textbook. But this is like literally the living word. It's living. It's breathing. It's happening now. And it's like, it's not going to die because it says my word will stand forever. You know, earth and... Heaven and earth will pass, away, but, but you know, my word will stand forever. Um, I just feel like, hi. Um, I feel like that's it. I feel. Um, I want us to understand and know that there are a lot of masters um, that aren't preaching this. They just aren't. It's just they get up there. You have about three minutes. All right, yeah. They get up there and they say whatever they want however they want to, but they don't preach the infallible word of God. They don't. If they okay. talk, pause. Here's how this goes. No, I'm going to tell you this right now. We're about to leave because we're about to end this. If your preacher goes a whole sermon without opening this book, he didn't say a sermon. He or just reading it without interpreting it. Or not explaining what he's saying to you. And here's a problem. Um, Cornelio said something that I really liked. Um, he says, pastors aren't made in schools, they're made in closets. Yeah. Yep. If you don't have your own... I'm probably young, but it's going to let y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm here, you get to talk to me later on today. But if you don't have your own prayer life with God, if you don't have your own intimate time with Him, that's why a lot of us aren't where we're supposed to be. We don't spend time with God. God is calling for us to sit and sit at his feet in intimate time with him and we just go about our time, go about our business and then we expect him to do stuff for us and we don't spend time with him. It's like you expect your husband to remember your anniversary but you guys haven't spent time together for ever. I don't know. Never. Never. Maybe you, oh no no no. That one hour every that week. One hour that every one week. hour every week. Um sometimes Bible study. Yeah. We as not only Americans, but we as Christians have become so spoiled. We've become so spoiled in the way that we... we become just daddy. Stuff. Blessings, blessings. We here. become stuff. bridezillas. Daddy's little girls. That, like, daddy, I want this daddy, daddy, daddy. And it's like, you're grown now. I don't, you don't got, you're not on the milk no more. You're on the meat. What are we going to do? Because you, you're trying, you want, you want stuff from me that... But you're not giving me anything. You're not, you're not obeying me. An obedient child is blessed. Blessed are those who seek after righteousness and hunger after righteousness. Are you hungry or are you full of something that you shouldn't be full of? Because if it's not the fear that you're full of, you should still be hungry. So... Where, where where did your hunger come well, from? Sometimes happened. we or maybe sometimes maybe. we fill up on garbage. We get full, yes. but it it empties out of us quicker. Yeah. And we're full, and we have garbage, and we're sick. We don't even know we're sick because mm -hmm. the enemy infestation is what Bishop said. Yes. we're sick, and it's as though 
we don't even know where he's sick because the enemy is so good at hiding stuff. He just sees people, right? So, in a way, it seems as though we've gotten so full of garbage that we can't even, um, can't even eat the meat of this word. We hear it and it goes through one ear and out the other. So, I'm um, too full to hear it. We're too full to take it in. So, what we have to do, we have to puke out that garbage, take it out, let it go, get it out of us so we can get filled back in with what we need to get filled with. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming to me now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up here a little later because we're about to leave. So, yeah. So, you guys, bye guys. You guys have a blessed day. My aim is to go to prayer. Um, I'll see if I periscope it or not. I got to get there first. So. Yeah. Right, I'm about to head. Oh, I'm about to head home. Bye. Love you. You guys be blessed.